Welcome to today's episode. Now, today, we're gonna to be looking at mastering the little things. When I began the walk around the world, I headed off with some very different advice to what you might suspect. My bishop at the time where I was living on mainland Australia had advised me that when you do the walk, occasionally take a bus, get in the car, take a train, do something just so that you do not come back to Australia with any pride that you have walked the entire way around the world. In fact, the walk wasn't even about drawing attention to disunity. We didn't do any media coverage. There was media coverage that generated naturally on the walk, but we weren't actually trying to get the media involved. The whole point of the mission was simply to meet people face to face. And the best way to do that turns out to be walking. The church here behind me is the, uh, the church here in a little town called Wadowice in southern Poland. This is the birthplace of Pope John Paul II. This was his church and he lived just down the road here, one of those houses there opposite it. Um, and Pope John Paul II actually is a, quite a bit and, uh, in the field of unity. And um, I'm not actually staying here in Wadowice though, I'm, I'm just passing through as it is. So I've got to keep walking because I'm, I'm actually behind schedule and I'm meeting someone in the next town in two hours and 15 minutes. And it's gonna take me about two hours and 15 minutes to get there if I keep going now. So I've gotta keep walking. A lot of people though think that because I did this walk, I love walking. And the truth is, I'm happy to do a little bit of exploring. There are plenty of other things I'd rather do than walking. What I found on the walk was that, yeah, there are some massive obstacles that you're gonna have to overcome, but often it was the small things. It's getting a blister. That's gonna end your walk, not a gun to your head. It's running out of water. It's the basics. Extending the invitation to pray for unity. It's about getting your mouth around a new language being able to communicate that they understand what you are saying and why you are saying. Welcome to today's episode. We're doing my favorite pastime. We're going kayaking. We're doing an episode on mastering the little things, and this isn't going to set up. Got my kayak down here, and I'm missing a bone. That is a little screw that goes in the back, and right now, water, as soon as I get out there and the, the back goes down, I'm going to be pace up, water's going to go into the kayak, fill it up, and I'll sink. This is their, uh, their gaffer tape. I'm going to have to patch that hole, because if I don't, I'll sink. Now, the good thing is, I do have a degree in mechanical engineering. And that means, effectively, I have a degree in how to use cable ties and sticky tape effectively. There we go.
absolutely love this. It's just phenomenally beautiful. I enjoy the peacefulness of kayaking. In fact, when I finished the walk around the world, the first thing I did after World Youth Day in Sydney was to fly home to Tasmania. And I basically spent the first two weeks after the walk kayaking. Pretty much every day I'd just head out and it was a, a beautiful prayer time, sitting there in silence, just, it was beautiful. It was a really nice time to, if anything, recuperate and just thank God for the 19 months that had transpired and the fact that I'd arrived home safely. Mission work is something that can be very simple, but also very well, fraught with danger. Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta now, noted that mission work is not about success. It is about faithfulness. The easiest way to illustrate that is simply with someone who is on their deathbed and they ask you, will you stay with me? Will you stay by my side? Now, if they die a few hours later, was your mission a success? Well, it's kind of the wrong question. Were you faithful to the mission you'd been handed? Well, in that case, the answer would be yes. You've been faithful to them. If not one person takes on the invitation to pray for unity, the mission is still a success if I continue praying. That is the mission. What I've been called to do is to pray for unity. And if no one takes that mission on, well, that's not my fault. I just continue to do what I have felt God asked me to do. And I didn't feel that God asked me to unite the world. God genuinely asked me to do was to pray for unity. That's my mission. I still do it. The rain has ceased for a really sad yep. no, it's... Oh, they're down the other way. <laughs> Uh, very pretty though. You see up in the hills here. The hills are getting covered with trees and the autumn leaves are still on them. There's a big dam down here with a river. What's the river called? Solwa. The Solwa. The Solwa River. And there's snow on the hills up ahead of us. So it's a bit of a cold day. We're going to find somewhere to have a rest in a minute and have some lunch, have first lunch. In our society now, there's, there is a, a great propensity to want to post everything on Instagram and Facebook. So and it is, I've got to be honest, this, even what we are doing right now, filming this, and all the speaking engagements I do, there's an awkwardness in it. It's an awkwardness at the end of the day when students want to talk about going on their own big adventure and they want to talk about going on some epic journey. And I think uh, that wasn't, wasn't why I was here. Yes, I, I, I did a long epic journey, but I didn't... When I think about the walk around the world, I don't think about walking around the world. I walked 10 kilometres many, many, many times over. It's actually how I did the walk. I didn't try and do the walk 15 and a half thousand kilometres. I did the walk in 10 kilometre increments. Occasionally, if I, if it was late and I was tired, I'd do a 15K session. But I did 10Ks, I'd then take my boots off. I'd sit on the side of the road, I'd have a rest, I'd find a spot. Take those times to rest. Maybe sit there for half an hour, eat some food, continue praying a rosary, and then walk another 10Ks. I can't walk 15 and a half thousand kilometers but I can walk 10 k's, and I can do that repeatedly, again and again. Spiritual journey is similar, but we are like, asked to be like God in the sense that we are to be patient, kind and generous. We're to be loving. They are the little things that we are to master. And yet, when I say they are little things, they are also the great things. They are the biggest things that we could possibly master.
Yeah, this morning heading off from Androv to Saint-Tierrent. Juviet. Juviet and a little bit further on. Uh, this is uh, Wojtek, and he's going to actually walk with me today. First person to walk with me in, in Europe as part of the Covenant community in Biosco Viala. That's right. Oh, very good. Okay, and um, Michael, Mich Michael. Oh, I mean, with that, I wanted to. Michael, I had super to sound in the bank. And we're going to catch up with him later on. He's been very smart and decided not to walk. He's going to take the car. I, I, I will fly. I will fly. There's one particular guy on the walk around the world who stood out regarding his actions towards what I was doing. There was one guy I met though in Poland and his name is Wojtek. Wojtek is an orthopedic surgeon and when I met him and he found out what I was doing, he asked where I was walking the next day. I told him where I was about to walk, which was actually up over a small mountain range in Southern Poland and he said to me, look, there's a blizzard forecast tomorrow. Now, as soon as he said that, I thought, here we go. He's about to offer to drive me. But before I could say, look, I'm going to walk, he said to me, I know a safe route. I'll call in sick tomorrow for work. And if you're happy, I'll show you the way through the safer route. But Wojtek was the first local to walk a full day with me and to offer to show me through a really dangerous area. He rocked up right on time and we had the most stunningly hilarious day walking with each other. Uh, the, the day was awful. It was such, the weather was horrible. The weather turned ugly, um, big blizzard. Wojtek and I went through this deep valley Wojtek decided to bring along with him a trumpet. He'd found an old school medieval trumpet along with his mate Michael. They found two trumpets in a garage sale. Neither of them could play. Didn't stop them from purchasing these two trumpets. Wojtek brought the trumpet with him. He decided that if he was going to walk one day, when we arrived in the town of Zhivyets, he was going to announce his arrival with the trumpet, that he had completed at least one day of the journey. As we were walking along, and this is one of those happy memories of the journey. This is what people do on an idle Saturday in Poland. <laughs> it's raining, there's no soccer to play, so they drive around playing trumpets. <laughs> we arrived in Zhivyets, freezing cold, wet. Wojtek grabbed the trumpet off the top of his uh, backpack. He attempted to announce our arrival in the village, but forgot to check the fact that the, the trumpet had been sitting upright all day. It was filled with water, so his first blow of that trumpet was nothing more than a whole heap of water, a whole heap of gurgling. So emptied that out and then announced his arrival. Wojtek and I have remained best mates, great friends. In fact, we have done a trip to South America to, and Central America to find people I'd met on the journey to reconnect with them. On so many occasions when I was walking along with Wojtek, we would stop, we'd meet people. There's a couple of little villages, stop into the churches, and uh, Wojtek did all the talking for me. He actually really enjoyed it. He seemed to revel in being able to extend the invitation to pray for unity and to explain what the mission was. We had a, a beautiful day. You could almost say it was a successful day. But what resonated with me for that day was that Wojtek was faithful to that mission. We prayed as we walked along. We interceded together. He extended the invitation to pray for unity. Yeah, he helped me to get to the end of the day.
Back in communist times, the people in Poland weren't allowed to build a church or attend church, but the community here needed a church. So they got together, did all the planning, and they built this church behind me in 24 hours, one day, one night, 24 hours straight. Started and finished it. I needed to do it so that the authorities wouldn't come along and tear it down before it was finished. All right. It's not man work for 24 hours. There is probably the, one of the most famous scripture passages. We, we hear it at weddings all the time from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And he writes here, and this is the mission. This is, these are the simple things we are to master, to put our, our mind to, to put our, our time to. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Our mission in life what we are called to do for most people, it's actually fairly simple. And it is a mastery of those small things. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of prayer, for the amazing witness of prayer that you've given us. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to be patient and kind that you would help us to navigate our way through the mission of life and the daily missions that we are presented with. Pray, Lord God, that you would help us to grow in love. May all you holy men and women, all your saints and angels, please pray for us. Pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World. <laughs>